It's DK and I'm back with another video. Make sure you put me on a big screen video. If you're in the car, turn me up on your stereo, baby. Before we get started, I want to say, throw the fees up. So don't see if you're a part of the crew. You already know what we're here to do. We're here to get busy and I'm glad you guys are with me. You have to move kind of swiftly. Now, today's going to be a little different than normal. I'm going to give you guys a story time. You guys are going to get a story time. Guess what? Today we try to go out there and get on the grind, but we did not shine. We only got one little order for $23. We definitely didn't pop our collar. So it is what it is. We ain't complaining. We maintain it. Now, on the last video I posted, I started off in the video by saying, I will never work a nine to five again. Um, I also, in the video, asked the opinion of you guys if you agree or disagree. Some people agreed, some people disagreed. Um, but I do want to give you guys some backstory on all this and how all this started from me going from working on the job to getting to where I am now. And um, along this process, there was a lot of things that I learned and a lot of things that happened. So, and also I do want to say this. I, I'm going to give y'all a little spoiler alert while we got here. I did, out of all the jobs I worked, I did get fired from one place. You guys will not believe who fired me. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So when I was about 10 to 11 years old, that was my first ever job. Um, and I worked at a place called Dave's Barbershop. Huge shout out to Dave. I'm not sure if Dave's still around. This was a long, long, long time ago. And also, huge shout out to my cousin, Chris, also, also known as Drano. So I used to go, me and my cousin used to uh, walk up there all the time. He had a job there, him and his friend named Gerard. They had the job there. So I used to just go there to help them. What we was only, only supposed to be doing is going in there and sweeping up uh, hair and everything. So eventually, I was working a little bit. I think they gave, was giving me like five dollars, you know, just sweep up the hair. And then Gerard, he moved. He moved somewhere. So guess what? <laughs> I stayed right in that job, baby. So me and my cousin there getting busy. Uh, we sweeping up here, and I think we was getting like ten or fifteen dollars whenever we went there. We went there for a long time. Oh yeah, we also used to uh, fill up the snack machines. You know, hey, I'm gonna say this. We were stealing too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we was out of pocket. We was stealing moon pies and, and, and uh, hey, hey, Dave, if you watching this, our fault. And Dr. Peppers and uh, what else? Moon pies, Dr. Peppers and uh, Butterfingers. We down in the basement. We supposed to go downstairs in the basement and get the stuff. We down there stealing, eating up snacks. We out of pocket. So that was kind of my first ever job that I ever had. Um, then I kind of worked with my uncle. Rest in peace of my uncle. He passed away um, from cancer, but. It wasn't like a real job. We just go to his house and do odds and ends. He had a dog. We used to clean up dog poop and all that stuff for him. It was in the grass and everything. We used to clean up that stuff. And then we used to uh, clean the bathroom, wash this, like little stuff like that, just so we can get some money in our pocket. So I really appreciate my uncle for allowing us the opportunity to make some money because we from the hood, man. So everybody ain't got money to be throwing around like that. So huge shout out to my uncle and rest in peace to him. Um, so yeah. So that was another thing that I did. That's when I got a little bit older, after I was like 10 or 11. Then I started doing that a little bit. That's giving me a little money so I can get some a la carte and stuff from school. You know, get some cheese fries, some nachos, them twisted juices. Y'all, the twisted juices, y'all know about that. Comment below, let me know if you know about that. So after that, um, I got a little bit older. Probably when it was like, oh, freshman year. Freshman year, no, the summer of freshman year. So after freshman year, it was the summer. I got in this program. Well, it was, it was actually during school. I got in this program from this teacher. Huge shout out to Miss Thomas. She was the computer teacher. So they had this program for students who was less fortunate and kinda on the spectrum, whatever that may mean. Now, what we had to do is we had to take this test. We had to be in low income because we was living, we was already on section eight. We had to be, we had to take this test and we had to do not good on the test. So pretty much what I did was I went in and just uh, bubbled all them joints in. And then we got this job. So we used to work Tuesdays and Thursdays we used to stay after school and like clean the school, screw up the students, stuff like that, throw everything in the garbage and everything. And then we used to have pizza sometimes, all that stuff. And then that was during the school year. Then when the summertime came, we started working at these different companies. I actually was working at a place called Cardinal Health. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, but I was working at Cardinal Health. And huge shout out to those people that was working there. They were super nice to me. I used to go in there, I just, just, just used to put like computer data in this computer. That's it. It was super sweet. Some days they gave me some candy and stuff. You know, I was in there chill. I'm only, I'm only 14 at this time. Gave me some candy and stuff. We had like little picnics and stuff like that. So it was super cute, super cool. So huge shout out to them. So after that, it was over because the summer was over. So it was only like the end of the school year to the summer. 
So after that, that happened, then I started working at a church. I worked at the church, helped them. You know, I was stealing snacks again because I'm a thief. I'm going to, hey, hey, God, please forgive me for stealing those snacks. I was stealing them snacks, eating. I was behind those snack bars, taking them, uh, them Cooler Ranch Doritos. <laughs> The cooler at Doritos, but we had to clean up the church and all that stuff. We had to help with the church. It was a church for uh, kids and teenagers. So, if you know about the area, it's called uh, Church of Joy. If you don't know about the area, then you don't know. If you know, you know. So, I worked there. And then, after that, um, we moved. I moved to Wisconsin. When I moved to Wisconsin, I started working at Kmart. So, I'm working at Kmart. I'm getting busy in there, you know, doing my thing. I'm working at the cashier. You know, I'm bringing people up. You know, girls coming in there and jane down on them. These, these like women, women. They like 20 some. I'm like 16. You know, they say we turn 18. You know, they, they was on that with me. They was on that with me. But at this particular time, this is the first time I've seen somebody get fired. So it was this dude who was working there, right? Look, he was working at the cash register too. He was a super cool dude though. He was working at the cash register too. And then I remember one time he told me, yeah, you know, I'll be going. He was always going to Taco Bell. And I was wondering how he was going to Taco Bell because I was blowing all my money trying to get fresh. I'm buying shoes, clothes. I'm, I'm buying all that type of stuff so I can be fresh for school. He was stealing money out the cash register and got caught. And guess what? The police came and took him right to jail. And that was the first time I seen somebody get fired. So I'm still working at Kmart for a little bit, working there, working there, working there, boom. Next thing you know, I holler at my guy Charles, my guy Carl, and this one I was doing in Wisconsin. So, you know, if they watching this, shout out to them. I then started working at the Dairyland Greyhound Dog Track. I worked at the dog track. All we got to do is take the dogs out, show the dogs, and it's a track, a, a race track. So, show the dogs, all that stuff. It was super cool. So, that happened. Uh, so, I was working at Came Up like 16 to 17, and then like 17 to 18, I was working at the dog track, and then like right when I got out of high school, I started working at a place called the Boys and Girls Club of Lake County. So I'm working at the Boys and Girls Club and this is when I started getting a little bit older. So I just want to do whatever I want to do. So I'm supposed to be working in this game room. In the game room, the kids, so what the Boys and Girls Club is, for those of you who don't know, it's a place where kids go after school, like the after school program. That's all it's for. After school, they come there, they study, do their homework and all that stuff. They play games. They got a gym in there. They got a computer lab. They have a, uh, they feed them snacks and they have a game room. So me, I'm supposed to be operating the game room. I'm in there operating the game room, but I'm just doing too much. I'm doing whatever I want to do. I'm in there. This is before, this is like 2008. I got slip pants, the, the pants with the holes in them. I'm not supposed to be having that on. I was make, creating my own stuff with the holes in it, the pants. I'm having that on. They always got to say something to me about that. Um, a lot of times I'm in the gym room. I'm supposed to be in the game room watching the kids. I'm in the gym shooting basketballs. I'm just, pause. I'm just doing whatever I want to do. I'm acting the fool. I'm out of control. They always just tell me, you can't do the drum. You can't do that. You drum, you can't do this, right? But mind you, this is in the project. This is in the hood. This not, is not like no, you know. This in the hood. These are hood kids. And one thing we know about some hood kids, some of them good and some of them terrible, terribly bad. It was this one, it was this one person who went to the boys' girls club all the time. And they just out of control. I'm talking about checking everybody, going crazy, don't care, cuz just do whatever they want to do. And one day, I don't really remember exactly what happened, but the person kicked me and I kicked him back. And guess what? <clears throat> I got fired. And guess who fired me? Take a guess. Only one person that's watching this video may know this. The person who fired me was my mom. My mom was the director of administration, and guess what? She had told me multiple times, I can't be doing this, I can't be doing that, and guess what I did? Did whatever I want to do, and she had to fire me. And guess what? Some people may be mad about this, say, yo, oh, mom fired you. I needed to be fired. I was out of control. I was doing too much. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I was over there in the gym shooting basketball. I'm supposed to be in the game room. I'm doing whatever I'm done to do. Kicking, pick, kicking people and all this stuff. Now, mind you, when I did kick this person, let's just say this: this was not, this was not, this was not no kid. Well, they was teenagers, cause I was eighteen, they was sixteen, so it wasn't like I was just kidding, kicking kids and all that stuff. So let's just start there. Let's just say that. So that was the first time I ever got fired, and the only time I ever got fired, and my mom had to do it. So after I got done working there, I was also going to school. I was going to see, I was going to CLC for those of you who are in the area, you know what I'm talking about, the College of Lake County. I was going to college, which that was a waste of time because I wasn't doing nothing in there neither. I was just going there, just like I was doing in school, getting fresh, talk to some girls, and that was it. I wasn't doing nothing else. I, I ain't never do no homework. I ain't never take no homework. Home. I ain't never do nothing. I was out of control again. So, now that I'm fired from this job, 
the car I was using when I was working this job was my mom's car, because I did have a car, but then I got in an accident. I was just doing the most. I got in an accident in this car, and then I had to use my mom's car, and now I had to pay the insurance and stuff, so I ain't got no job no more, so how am I gonna pay the insurance and gas? So, she ended up taking the car, and guess what happened? I had to go, well, I didn't have to go. I decided to go to Job Corps. And that's where I learned how to paint cars into well. So the first the first center I went to, I learned how to... Now, the only reason why I'm telling you guys this is because it's going to go to my next thing about me working a job. So at my first center in Edinburgh, Indiana, it was called Atterbury. I went there and learned how to weld. So I did great in the class. Everything they said, I did a great job. So they said, you should go to advantage training. I wasn't going to go because my girl was at home at the time. My girl was home and I'm like, but you know what? I got to take advantage of this. So I ended up going to advanced training. When I went to advanced training, I learned how to paint cars. And I also was working in a cafeteria. Now I'm hustling, I'm doing whatever I'm doing. You know, I'm cutting hair, I'm selling cigarettes, I'm doing all that stuff too. But that was the next job, was working in the cafeteria. Just clean off the tables, wash dishes and stuff like that. So once I leave Job Corps, I'm like 21 at this time. And I get this job at Second Wind Exercise Equipment. So huge shout out to all my guys that work at Second Wind. If y'all watching the video, huge shout out to y'all. I hope y'all doing great. So. I was working at Second Wind Exercise Equipment. You know, lifting exercise equipment, taking it into people's house, putting it together, home gyms, treadmills, ellipticals, uh, bikes and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm in there. I'm working there from 2011 to 2014. Now, let's start here. I got in a huge argument with the supervisor. Now, this is before I left. So I gave him my two week notice and then everything was cool i thought so i took a couple days off before i started this new job so i went in there he said i need you to come sign this paper and all this stuff so i go in there and sign the paperwork so i can uh, move on to the next job in a couple weeks and i'm thinking i'm supposed to come back to work on monday so let me tell you what happened i signed the paperwork and everything i go home that was on a friday monday come around i go back in i go back to work i try to clock in i can't clock in i can't clock in i can't clock in i'm like what's going on i can't clock in I called him, the supervisor, he don't answer the phone. Called him again, he don't answer the phone. So I'm still loading the truck, you know, pause. We putting the, the exercise equipment in the truck and everything. Everything cool. I'm like, I don't know what my thing not working, but I'm just going to talk to him when he get here or something. I hear somebody else talking to him on the phone. He had just called him, talking to him on the phone. I'm like, let me see that right quick. So I talked to him like, um, for some reason I can't clock in. He's like, yeah, you, ain't, you, ain't, you can't clock in because you're not supposed to come back no more. And uh, something else he said. So now... At this point, I didn't got mad now. Because this is the reason why. I felt it was very disrespectful what he did. Because if you if I wasn't supposed to return back to the job, you should have told me that before I had came all the way up here. You didn't tell me, but everybody in the warehouse know. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I'm just in here looking stupid. In here loading the truck and all that stuff. I can't I can't clock in. I, I don't think everybody in the warehouse knows, but some of the people in the warehouse knew about this. They never said nothing. He never said nothing. Me and him got into a huge argument. A huge argument. I never liked him. He never liked me. Um, oh, 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 let's rewind. He was the supervisor, but before him, this is this is why I run this up. Before him, guess what? There was another supervisor, and guess what happened to him? He was fired. He had been working there for a long time. I think like maybe six or seven years. He had been working there at this job. He had uh, his, that was his career. That was his career. He was the supervisor. He was running the warehouse, the whole entire warehouse. He was doing this thing, and they fired him and then gave his best friend his job. From what I understand, something happened. I don't know what happened. That's neither here nor there. But with this happening, I've heard from the grapevine that he wanted to unalive himself because he had been working there for so long. You build this lifestyle that you have. You get your house, you get your car, you get your girl, you get, you're doing all this stuff. You're living your dream, you're living your life. I don't know if it's his dream or not, but you're living your life. And then something like this happened, you get fired. And now what are you gonna do now? And ain't no telling how much debt you got. This is the reason why I'm saying this about these jobs. And I understand everybody don't agree with what I'm saying, but I'm saying what I'm saying. Every, some people think that you don't have a number. Everybody got a number. Now, I'm going to veer off a little bit to this. Everybody has a number when it comes to jobs or even if it comes to the gig gas, it comes to any of this stuff. Because you are not in control because you don't own the company. So at any given time, when you keep on coming late to work, well, now they don't kind of care about lateness, but you keep on coming late to work and all that stuff, guess what's going to happen? Ugh, they going to get you up out of there. Guess what's gonna happen if you keep on going late to these gig gaps and keep on going late and not showing up and doing all this stuff. You're supposed to go pick up this order, go here, you don't do it over and over and over. Guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna kick you off the app. So 
I want to say this quote that I learned from Wall Street Trapper. If you allow a man to feed you, you also allow him to starve you. And that's the reason why, I hope that ain't go over your head. Let me say it again. If you allow a man to feed you, you also allow him to starve you. That's why you should never rely on one source of income or never rely on one person or on one customer. Never rely on one thing. You need to put yourself in a position to win. If you don't, you might be in for a rude awakening. I just want to say that. I want to be very clear when I say that. Now, we're going to go to the next job. The next job was the last job I worked. So, all, one thing about me, I've always been an overachiever. I'm always going to go to the gusto, especially when it's time to get this money. When it's time to get this money, I'm going, I'm going crazy. So, the next job I work at was called Pussmeister. So, what I did in there when I first got in there was, I told you guys I went to school for uh, auto body and paint. I went to Job Corps. So I was sending submit trucks. So we send the trucks down and mask them up and then they take them in the paint booth and they paint them. It's called a Telebell. So after a while doing that, huge shout out to my guy Tim. I'm gonna get to Tim again. I'm gonna tell you about Tim. Tim was a cool guy. I really appreciate him. He always showed love. He worked at the job. He was a supervisor over there in that area. Um, never had any problems, never anything. I come to work, do my job. He was always cool. But the one thing I, did like, I really liked about Tim Paul's was that Tim was a straight shooter. He gonna just be straight honest with you. He ain't gonna sugarcoat it, he ain't gonna do none of that. So he's straight honest. So, after a while, I'm like, Tim, man, I'm trying to, I like doing the job, it was cool and all, but I'm trying to elevate, I'm trying to make more money. So Tim allowed me to fill out an application for another position in another department. So, I go fill out the thing, I get the, I get the job and everything. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually putting the machines together. I'm actually putting them together. You know, I got my drill set, my whole little setup. I'm already mechanically inclined because I worked at the exercise equipment and I also did the auto body and painting everything. So I already know how to put stuff together already. So I'm putting everything together and that's cool. I worked there for a while. That's cool. Then again, I'm a welder because I remember I went to Job Corps. So they have another position open up. Now this is this is over a five year span. They have another position open up as a welder and these uh, welding pipes together pause pipe welding pause so i go to that department that's cool everything cool everything glamorous everything glory i'm in there always on the phone but now nah, i'm talking on the phone a lot but i'm getting my work done i'm doing i'm knocking these pipes out pause that's crazy i'm doing my job let me just say that so after a while i don't know what happened but they changed management. Something happened. I think the uh the old the old CEO of the plant, he retired. They got new management. When the new CEO came in, he brought all the people from his old his old job in there. And ever since that happened, it went terrible from there. It went terrible from there. So, in the meantime, in between time of them switching management and all that stuff going on, after a while, I guess they start doing. They start laying off people. Now, mind you. This was like 2018, 2019. I used to do stuff called Road to Success. I told you guys about this in the live. If you didn't watch it go live, if you didn't watch the live, make you go make sure you go watch that. So in 2018, 2019, this happened. On the road to success, please prepare for your future. Also understand that at these jobs we work, we're just numbers. That's it, that's all. Um, I went to work today and uh they was laying people off. Um Actually, they said by the end of the day, they was going to lay out 45 people. Getting closer to the end of the day, I noticed a lot of people start scattering and start hiding just to pretty much stay another day. I mean, it actually was real sad, man. I, I ain't going to lie. I've never seen grown men do stuff like that, but it, it was real sad. Um, and who knows? It could be you or it could be me tomorrow. Who, you never know. Um, so please prepare for your future. Now, y'all be great. So you guys saw what happened and it was absolutely critical. And this is what I'll be telling y'all. This is what I told you on the last video. So I told you on this video. We are when you work for a company, you're just a number. Whether it's the company that you work for, you cause just because you got this 401k pension and all that stuff, you think that you, hey, at any given day, that day can be your day. This also goes for gig gaps. You just a number. This also goes for carry companies. You just a number. As you guys saw, I got kicked off of the Spark app. I also got kicked off from a carry company because when you're working for someone else, they determine how their rules are and what they are going for and they're, what they're not going for. Now, on this particular day that you guys just saw, when I, now mind you, that was 2019, February 2019. So I've been saying this stuff. This that was five years ago, over five years ago. There was this guy, 
he was literally working there for 26 years. He was working there for 26 years and he was going to retire soon. And guess what? They laid him off. He was working there for 26 years. They laid him off. He had kids, family, house, and all that. They laid him off. So understand, this. just like I said in the video, this could be me or this could be you. So always prepare for your future. Now, so I'm still working at this job. I'm working back there. They got the new management going on. Everything cool for a little while. Then they demoted my supervisor at the time and put a person from another another uh, another department over there as a supervisor. And it went downhill from there. I'm talking about it was critical. Also, another, they did another layoff after that, like some months or maybe some months after that, that my guy Tim I was telling y'all about, that was my supervisor at the other uh, in the other department. He got laid off. He ended up retiring. So he it, it wasn't really laid off. It's like kind of like a forced retirement. Not not really forced retirement. He just said he was gonna retire because he had been working there for 20, 20 something years, just like the other dude. So, boom, I'm working there, and then guess what? I start getting into it with this new supervisor every day because he always got something to say to me. And hey, I don't really care. Don't keep on come bothering me now. I ain't doing under you. I'm here doing my job. I ain't bothering nobody. We always kept on getting into it every almost every day. And I'm just not gonna allow you to talk to me crazy and all that stuff. He just was doing the most. It was a lot. If you, in my life story, I'll probably tell a little bit more. There's a lot going on. And also, I got another video. So, this right here was my last day working at that job. So today is June 28th, 2019, right? And thus far, this will be the biggest day of my life. Um, today is my last full day of working for somebody. Um, on Monday, I'm coming, uh, give them the they belong us and everything and and it's over uh, this has been one of my biggest dreams since i was younger to not work for somebody by the time i turned 30. Um, i'm actually 29. Um, i was going to wait till next year to do this but pretty much my hand was forced and i'm going to explain that to you guys later on in the rest of this video because this will be going on youtube so um yeah it's official man and understand you can do this too i'm not nobody special um i just saved my money and invested it and um now I'm going to retire. And now we're going to get into the reason I created this video. Um, just so you guys know, this video was not to bash anyone or say anything negative about someone who works a 9 to 5. Or to make it seem like that I'm better than them because they work a 9 to 5 and I don't. This is not any of that. This is The whole purpose of this video was to let you guys to know to prepare for your future. Because you never know what may happen. The things that I saw on my journey of working for people was a life learning experience. And honestly, I could never put my, my my future in the hands of anybody else. I just can't do it. Um, since then, since I haven't been working this job for five years, I've done a lot of different things. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I am a real estate agent. I got my license in 2018. Um, I bought, I had a property, I bought my first property in 2016. I bought another one in 2018. Um, we flipped a couple properties. We flipped one in 2021 and then one in 2022. Um, we started the YouTube channel. Uh, we got the clothing line. We got the cologne. We got the perfume. We got T-shirts. We got jogging suits. We got short sets. I also got my one of my dream cars along this process of me not working a job. Now, this goes to say that working a job is not for everybody. For me personally, it helps me out because you eat what you kill. So whatever you go out there and make, that's on you. Whatever you don't make, that's on you. you it's People think that working a job, you're going to be stable, and that's not always the case. Um, as you guys saw, some people that along this story was working at these different uh, jobs for over 20 plus years, and they got let go. So just understand it can't happen to you. And also with the gig apps and everything else, carry companies, it can't happen to me. So don't think that I feel that I'm better than you or anything like that. It's just, it is what it is. And I just want to say, always put yourself in position to win and always understand you should come first before anything else. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, give me a thumbs up. Before we go, I gotta say it one more time. Thumbs up! I don't see if you're a part of the crew. You already know what we're here to do. We're here to get busy. I'm glad you guys are with me. Also, I want you to comment, comment below. What do you think about this video? You think it was a good video? Do you think it was a bad video? Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Um, do you like these type of videos? Or do you like when I go out there and get busy more? Or do you, or do you want a mixture? Comment below and let me know. We're here to scope. But I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's DDK, and I'm on my way.